Hello and welcome, dear ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on the time zone you are living in. I hope that you are all well and fit. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I am very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our fourth ITTF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Performance Keys for Players. I want to talk shortly about our webinar code, about our rules. To all the attendees, please mute yourself and turn off the video. Just the panelists' micro and webcam will be on. Please don't touch anything regarding the recording or our PowerPoint presentation slides. And please leave all your questions in the chat and we will try to answer as many as possible of them later on in the question and answer part of the webinar. So now over to the introduction of our panelists. I want to thank you all very much for taking the time and I would like to start with Sofia Polkanova. Hello Sofia. Hereby, I wish you a good and fast recovery after your hip surgery. Sophia is the, uh, took the third place in the Women's Singers 2018 ITTF European Championships, the second place in the Women's and Mixed Doubles 218 ITTF European Championships, the third place ITTF Europe Top 16 Cup 2019 and 20, and the fifth place with the team at the Olympic Games 2016. Over to Tomislav Putza from Croatia. Hello, Tommy. Hello. The bronze medalist of the 2019 European Games. Third place team event at the 2014 European Championships. Round of 16 in the singles event at the Liebherr 2019 ITTF World Table Tennis Championships. And the European Under-21 gold medalist. Over to Aruna Kwadri from Nigeria. Hello, Aruna. The quarter finalist of the 2016 Olympic Games, quarter finalist of the World Cup 2014, champion of the 2018 Seamaster Nigeria Open and 2019 ITTF Challenge Plus Nigeria Open. Furthermore, champion 2017 of the Challenge Polish Open. Over to the last but not least panelist, Bernadette Soch from Romania. She took the first ITTF European Team Championships event, uh, Women's Team Event 2019 European Games, and she was the winner of the Europe Top 16 Cup 2018 and took the second place 2019. Hello, Bernie. Hello. Nice Last to see but, you. Nice to see you too. Last but not least, I would like to warmly welcome our ITTF High Performance in Development Elite Coach Massimo Costantini. Pass Hello, over to everyone. you, Massimo. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you very much for uh, uh, accepting this invitation for this, uh, this webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to all of you for the great achievement uh, you are keep uh, keep uh, having, and uh, I hope, of course, in future, uh, many more achievement will uh, will come. Uh, before starting the the, the topics, uh, um, just a quick question, starting from Bernie: uh, How is the current training situation in your country, Bernie, Sofia, Tomislav, uh, Aruna, one by one? We start. <laughs> yeah, you bet me, you bet me. How is the training situation? You come back to the table and do a lot of training? Yes, uh, I was uh, lucky that uh, I am home with my brother and uh, uh, we had the chance to get one table and put in the garage. And of course, it's not the normal practice. It's not the same like in the hall. But minimum we can practice some small things that uh, we can keep in shape and of course i am very lucky that uh, my brother played the same sport like me and we can practice together of course uh, the most important at the moment for me was uh, physically i made every day some physical because uh, like how I said before that uh, table tennis i cannot play 100 percent because not so big plays and it's a little bit too slippery. <laughs> so I try to make some uh, multiple, some small things 
So I hope that uh, when I go back in the table tennis hall, then that okay. I will, yeah, that I will be in good shape. Okay, I'm sorry for your brother that you you make him work a lot, you know. So you block anywhere, and then he has to play topspin from. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He always say that my block it's already very fast, but now in the small place in the garage is even faster. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. How about you, Sofia? Okay, you you just uh, got this uh, this uh, surgery. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I saw a video on uh, Facebook. So, but anyway, in uh, in uh, in uh, in your country, you started again uh, doing some work in the hall. Uh, yes, Austria is much better now. The situation improved a lot, and our government made a very good decision. Um, they allowed uh, top players to practice, and before my injury, I was already practicing. I practiced two weeks, and in the hall, of course, we we have to take uh, or we have to follow all the rules. We have to enter with masks. Yeah. And we we cannot do all exercises. For example, short short is not possible to play because it's not enough space between players, and we cannot pick up the balls uh, like only one person can pick up the balls. But it's much better than not to practice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Before the the operation, I was already practicing in in the hall. Thank you, thank you. Tommy, Tomislav, how about you? Croatia? Croatia is uh, really good at the moment. Today is only one infected, so we are lucky. We are already three three weeks in the hole, so everything is back to normal. And we are practicing a lot and yeah, I think it will stay the same and we are just waiting for tournaments to start. Aruna. Aruna, you have to unmute yourself. You are muted. I'm muted. Thank you very much. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The situation in Portugal is uh, much more better. Uh, of course, I've not been practicing since two months. I was injured during the Olympic Games uh, qualification in Tunisia. And uh, I've not been playing. Uh, almost uh, every week I'm trying as much as possible to do physical fitness three times per week and uh, that is what I've been doing in Porto where is a uh, Portugal Federation they started practicing already and uh, here in Lisbon we have not started and hopefully in the next couple of days uh, we will start practicing I'm looking uh, forward to uh, forward back to normal life just like we have been doing before the virus came thank you okay so let's get get back to the to the topic uh, is the performance keys uh, uh, and uh, we used to uh, talk to our uh, audience uh, coaches players that uh, uh, you know the the keys of the performance are, are basically the four keys techniques uh, obviously tactics fitness and uh, mental so uh, starting from you um, tomislav what what is the area? What is the area that you count uh, uh, most on? Uh, more you focus more on tactic, ta techniques altogether. Uh, I would say that tactic is most important uh, for me. Uh, so I always prepare for, for every match tactically. I always watch my opponent how he plays. Now in these times we have internet, we can see everything. So I'm trying to find, let's say, his bad spots on, on the table and. Uh, this is my goal, uh, and I think this is what I count the most. On. Great, great. So, uh, how about you, uh, Sofia? Okay, forget uh, this moment, I understand. <laughs> but in the normal situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, the mental strength is very important. I think the most important. Um, like, I always try to prepare not only tactically but also to motivate myself before every match because I, I think this is very important and I think when when the score is uh, like 10 10 it's very important to keep calm and not to be nervous and to play your best so I think and you have to be strong yeah, right yeah the match is the most important how about you Aruna uh, 
For me, it is uh, very, very important to be good in almost everything, but it is almost impossible to be good in everything. Uh, just like we have known, <laughs> almost everyone can play. Uh, but it is very, very important, according to my style of play, to be physically well prepared. Because I run a lot. This is based on my <laughs> own style of play. But for others, it's quite different. Yeah, true. Bernie? For me, same. The mentality is the most important because uh, a lot of times we are very close in the scores. And it's very important for me to be positive and to be prepared for this score. And then in like 80%, I am winning these games. So that's why for me, the mentality is the most important. And of course, the physically and the tactic is also very important for me. But always for me, how I say, first is mentality. And when I am good mentality, it's physically and tactically, I am much better. Great, great. So I'm sure that uh, the, the audience is ready to, to um, place some, uh, some questions. So we, will, uh, we are going for uh, answering the questions uh, at, the, at the end of this. So I give uh, back to Dominic. You also you have prepared some uh, questions for our guest. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, Massimo. I do have some questions for our guest. I would like to start with Aruna this time. Aruna, when you are thinking about the technical aspect, how do you manage to work on it during the season when you're having a tough tournament schedule? Uh, I think I've been trying to be mentally strong and uh, it has not been very, very easy. But of course, things we get quite better. Uh, for me, another thing that is very, very important is service reception. Uh, my reception is not so good. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a table tennis board at home, but uh, I'm trying as much as possible to watch uh, some of the great stars of table tennis in the world, how they are receiving, how they are doing their movement. And uh, hopefully some of the videos that I've been watching will uh, help a little bit in getting much more better. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And how, how do you manage it during the, I mean, the competition season? You know, like if you have a very full schedule, you know, like... How do you manage it then, you know, not nowadays? Uh, for me, I always try as much as possible not to be very, very tired. Uh, when competition is very, very close, I reduce my training section hours and uh, I try as much as possible to take care of what I'm eating. And uh, I know everyone do not really know everything. Uh, sometimes I try to get uh, some experience and knowledge uh, in terms of the game from other players. Thank you very much, Aruna. Uh, over to Perni. Perni, how do you manage uh, to work on your technique during a, a tough, uh, tough uh, tournament schedule? Uh, this is very hard because uh, I like a lot to practice and I know that uh, without a lot of practice, I am not in the good shape like when I have time for practice. But how I said before also that uh, when I am very well prepared mentality, then I am also prepared physically and tactically. But that's why uh, I am speaking. I have my personal psychologist. I am speaking uh, every week minimum one or two times with her because uh, she's helping me a lot to going yeah. for out of the much stress. Uh, so many times I go from tournament to tournament. I have even no time one day to practice and this is very hard. Because in the end, uh, I think it's very important to practice also and to not be from tournaments in tournaments. But I am very strong mentality and I think that's why uh, I can tournaments well and okay, sometimes happen that in some tournaments I cannot play how I wish, but this is the sport life. Okay, thank you much. Thank you very much, Bernie. Uh, over to Sofia. Sofia, how do you manage to work on your technique? Um, so I think during the, during the tournaments, it's like Bernie said before, it's very difficult to, to practice to keep the form. So anyway, what you practice before counts the most. So when you go to the, to, to the tournament, you just have to, 
to let your feeling play. And of course, it's, it's very difficult if you have four tournaments in two months or, or like this. But if you are strong uh, inside, then you will not you will not lose it. You will just if you also believe in yourself, you will not lose the technique or or the physical. Of course, it's very important to to keep the physical uh, aspects to go to the gym uh, during the competitions and uh, yeah to practice enough. But I also. Uh, reduce my practice sessions normally when when the tournament. Thank you very much, Sofia. Last but not least, Tomislav, we would like to hear from you how, how you are managing this situation. So as they said, uh, it's not so easy to to change your technique or to practice your technique during the tournaments and manage the season. So I think I'm also not doing any drastic changes in my technique. I'm uh, when my coach sees something, we are trying to we are trying to fix this uh, bit by bit, and um, yeah, that's it. And also, as they said, uh, when it's season, it's many tournaments, so we cannot practice so much. So I think these times also are now not so bad because uh, for us, because we can practice a lot and uh, think about our technique and make some improvement. Okay, thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, back to Max for your next question, Max. So yeah, well, basically, it's never too late to, to learn something new, right? So, but we don't have time actually <laughs> to implement something new. But anyway, so we have touched this uh, the techniques uh, back to the tactics. Uh, uh, I would start uh, again with uh, um, with the uh, Thomas Love. Um, uh, suppose uh, you have to you have to play with the player you never played with. So what, uh, how would you set up your tactics? How would you proceed? Uh, focus more on yourself, uh, more on the opponents? Uh, you don't know the player. Uh, so as I said already, I think now nowadays when we have internet, I think I found almost every player on YouTube against I uh, played. So I'm, I think I'm always prepared. Always, I always watch videos with my coach and. Uh, we always know something, we always write something, so we, I know how to enter the match, I know something I will start with, but also I'm always uh, counting uh, on my service, uh, position with my service and yeah, to be active and try to, to be more active than him and I think, yeah, that's it. Great, thank you. Bernie, Bernie, how about yeah. you? How about you? How, how... Uh -huh. I think it's very important both of sides that, that uh, I need to concentrate also on myself, what I need to play, and I need to be 100% concentrate. And uh, doesn't matter if it's better than me or uh, um, a little bit uh, less good than me. So, but also when I know that. Hello? I play. I always, I always I always am trying to uh, find a video on YouTube with the player with uh, who I will play next day. And of course, I I am watching what tactics is the most uh, good against this player. But also, I need to concentrate on myself. What is the best I play? And how I say the most important is mentality, and to not be afraid of no one. So nowadays, video is very, very important to, to prepare well a competition, of course, or a match. And uh, how about you, Sofia? Yeah, so basically, guys already said everything what I wanted to say. Ah. <laughs> I also do video analysis before every match and that I can adjust to the player. Of course, they come to the table, it's a completely different situation. So in first set, maybe I try to, to see what, what, what the opponent is really playing, because of course he's also prepared against me and not me uh, good. But yeah, I also concentrate on my series and then on receive. So play, play and investigate uh, on the opponent's uh, abilities let's say how about you aruna uh, 
Uh, for me, it is uh, something a little bit different. Uh, it is always very, very hard and tough to play against the player that uh, you do not even know anything about. But just like I said earlier, uh, nobody knows it all. I always try as much as possible to seek uh, opinions of other players and coaches, especially in the World Tours, you know, uh, against a player that I have never played before. I ask uh, different players who already played against him. And uh, sometimes I ask coaches. I know I must always be myself. I always try as much as possible to compose myself and uh, go straight to the match. And uh, why I got already some uh, advice from those that played against him before, then I walk towards those advice and I go straight to the match and uh, give everything. Good, good. So talking with other uh, teammates and other players also is uh, uh, helping to prepare. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Dominic. Thank you very much, Max. Uh, you mentioned all the mental aspect, but also the physical one. Yeah. Regarding the fitness, uh, let's start with Sofia. Uh, how do you set up your physical preparation prior a major competition? Well, good that you didn't ask now. How <laughs> <laughs> I have <my> physical preparation. <laughs> Now it's fine. <clears throat> okay. For the match, I try to warm up really good, uh, to be active, to be aggressive, like inside and outside. And uh, during the tournament, I go to the gym. I I have my physical coach at home, and he always gives me exercises which I have to do during the tournament. So yeah, that's basically my my plan for the tournament okay so it seems that you really have a regular routine right yes, yes. i okay. think it's very important yeah thank you very much sofia uh pass over to tomislav how do you set up your physical preparation prior a major competition uh, so my physical preparation is almost uh, always the same because uh, I cannot say I'm doing too much. I'm doing just the prevention from injuries. So I'm not doing uh, many things. I'm just trying to, to, do, to do the things that uh, will keep me outside of injuries. And yeah, that's it. Okay. So yeah, everybody, of course, it's a very individual topic and everybody has, has his own style. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, pass over to Aruna. Uh, luckily, luckily, I have people who work with me a little bit here in Sporting in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, they gave me things to follow and uh, I am always following these things. Uh, if I will play in the next one week, I try to reduce a little bit. If I will not play in the next two weeks, I try to do more and more. And uh, these things are very, very important, especially for my own style of play. And uh, mostly these days, table tennis is quite competitive. Almost all the matches are ending for three. So it is very, very important to be physically fit. So if I will not play in the next one week, I reduce. Yeah, I, I try to do more. If I will play in the next uh, seven days, I try to do less. So that I don't get totally tired before the matches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you totally, totally adapted uh, to, the, to the competition schedule. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Aruna. Uh, Bernie, what about you? Uh, I am lucky that uh, I practice with boys in Werder Bremen. And uh, before every practice, we have uh, the second coach and uh, who make physically also with us before every practice. And uh, he's helping me a lot because uh, I am making the same exercise like the boys. And it's very hard for me, but I never give up. This is the most important. And of course, uh, I am going a lot of time to fitness and uh, I try to make the exercises for, for all of my part of body because it's important. Because uh, when I was younger, I was a lot of times injured. So now I am taking care a lot. And I try to ask also some specialist who is helping me what is the most important and what is I need for my body. And of course, during the tournament, uh, 
I am trying to keep to make some small things, not uh, as much like I am doing when I practice. And I have no tournaments, but uh, always I am doing some small things to keep in shape. And I am not losing uh, power with this. I am even stronger with these small exercises. Thank you very much, Biani. I like uh, what you mentioned because this is, in in my opinion, a very important uh, important fact that uh, you also have to to keep the rhythm during the tournaments as as uh, good as possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you, Bernie. Pass over to Max again. Okay, so yeah, well, um, <clears throat> now we have an, another uh, another factor that is very important for our performance, which is the equipment. So your racket, uh, or sometimes uh, the the ball, uh, rubbers, uh, gluing, not gluing, uh, some uh, rituals or whatever. So what is the your relationships with your equipment, with your racket, Aruna? Let's start with you. It's something uh, that is a sacred. You just touch every time. Okay, but please don't betray me. Let's go and win. <laughs> Do you uh, talk? To that? <laughs> for me, I prefer to have just two rackets. Even out of the two, I always prefer to use one. Uh, let me talk about my blade. I am playing with uh, a lot of power, so I play with a blade that is uh, that has medium speed, that is not so fast and not too slow. So something like a medium. Uh, my rubbers, I play with hard rubbers and uh, I glue in a normal way. It is very, very important. Uh, about the uh, racket, I believe a lot, but uh, there are some other things that I believe in. For example, if I play with this shirt today, normally everyone has like three or four same type of shirt. If I play with this shirt today and I win, definitely I will come the same with the same shirt tomorrow. So I believe in these kind of things. If I played with one boxer, I will come with the same boxer tomorrow. I will wash and come back. If I play with one shot, I will do the same. So, and these things are working for me. Uh, absolutely, I'm, uh, I am someone who prays a lot. Also, before every match, I, I like to pray to God. After we must have worked a lot, you know. We put so many things together in practice, do a lot of things. So apart from uh, rubber, getting totally prepared, uh, I believe in God. I pray before every match. Oh, cool. Uh, next, Tomislav, do you talk with your racket? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> but uh, as Aruna said, I have uh, also, I have two rackets and the only one I use. I think both are uh, good, <laughs> but only one I use for my matches. I'm, I cannot change uh, to another one for the match, only for practice. Uh, I'm really satisfied with my rubbers and with my racket and uh, also with gluing. I know already how to do it. I'm always doing it the same. So yeah, I believe my racket and it's uh, never betraying me. Great, great. Um, Bethany? Uh, my relationship with the racket is uh, a good one because uh, I am not uh, so big fan of gluing and I can play with the same rubber even two, three tournaments if it's not broken. So... Now I started like last year, in the end of last year, to start to change a little bit more often my rubbers. But uh, because I am, I know when I lose, I don't lose because of the racket. So I am very positive and I know if I lose, it's, it's my fault, it's not the racket fault. So that's why I think until my rubbers are not used, it, like I mean it's not bad or broken, I will not change. So my... I, I always say that the racket is my forever love. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sofia? Um, yeah, I, I love my racket, but it was not all the time like this. Uh, I was younger, I hated to glue, and uh, my father always did it for me, and he also cut my rubbers uh, because I'm lefty. It was very difficult to cut with the scissors for, for the right hand. Oh, but yeah. of course I have scissors for, scissors for the lefties now and it's much, uh, much better. Uh, but um, yeah, I, mm, I love my racket, but I don't give it so much um, attention before the match because, because I, it, as Barry said before, it's inside, like if you have the feeling 
then you have the feeling. And um, I have one racket and I glue normally uh, before every tournament. And if I don't have tournaments every two or three weeks. So uh, when was the last time you blame uh, your racket? Ah, why I lost? Uh, no, never happened. Aruna. <laughs> <laughs> I never blame my racket. I know. It was a high ball, ah, racket. Well, no, I, I want to continue a little bit on this. Uh, um, yeah, we know that we have uh, so many different equipment, tables, uh, flowing, of course, balls, uh, uh, changing. How you how you adjust uh, every time uh, with, uh, with different conditions, uh, sometimes more humid, sometimes a uh, little hotter, and so on. We start the opposite from you, Sofia. How you manage, how you adjust in a very short time to get ready and used with the, with the new equipment you have to play? Um, so first, first thing what I think is that not only me, if the conditions are not very good, I'm always thinking that, okay, not only I have those conditions, but so everybody is in the same position and yeah then I try to adjust but I, I guess this is we have to we don't have a choice we have to adjust <laughs> to, to our conditions and we have to, to compete there is no other way so that's it I just I don't blame um, anyone I just try to to adjust to the conditions Bernie same how uh, Sofia said that uh, we don't have other choice. This is the way we need to play and we need to accept because it's not just for me. It's not good for all of the players. All of them. So I, I know that I need to adapt more quickly in front of the other players where I can win. And uh, of course, it's not easy so many times, but uh, I don't like to blame uh, no one. And I try to adapt myself to the conditions. Good. Tomislav? Uh, for me, it's the hardest to adapt uh, on tables, on tournaments, because every almost every tournament is different table, and uh, every table is, um, I don't know, one table is jumping a lot, one table is stopping. So for me, this is the most hard thing. And uh, I'm trying before uh, every tournament that we practice on table, uh, which is similar to one we, that will be on the tournament. And it's the same with the balls for me. So we try now. Okay, now is the situation is better. We are almost playing uh, every tournament with the same ball. But before, okay, also Europeans, we have to change to Nitaku ball, which is quite hard to change after DHS. So yeah, it's uh, we always try we try to practice before tournaments with the same equipment that it will be on tournaments. Yeah, good. Yeah, well, uh, we we are we are champion of adaptation, and the, the the faster we adapt, the better. How about yeah. you, Aruna? Uh, for me, it is uh, three kind of uh, things in the club. You know, you play with one ball all through. In Portugal, I don't know about uh, every other country. So in Portugal, we play with one ball all clubs, and uh, internationally, we play with one ball as well. DHS. And uh, Champions League or ETTU, which is uh, another ball different and another tables. Uh, just like everyone said, as a professional, you just have to get adapted. In table tennis, there is nothing like home advantage. It is the same kind of situation for everyone. So professionalism is very, very important. So as a professional, no matter what, you have to get adapted. And, uh, you know, you never go to a tournament like you arrive today and playing tomorrow. That is not professional. And that is why I said professionalism is very, very important. So if you are going to pro tour, you have to be there two days before so that I can get adapted. No one is living there. So as a professional, it is very, very important to put this in our brain. So this is this is a, this is a great, uh, I mean, uh, teaching, you know, to our uh, coaches and uh, and players uh, that uh, we have uh, we have really to uh, to to think about uh, how to adapt and not to. Uh, complain uh, situation is the same for uh, for everyone so uh, we have to live with so that's very very good message that uh, we can uh, we can send out uh, to our uh, audience 
So I think back to Dominic, uh, you, you have something, something more, right? Yeah, you are very right, Massimo. Uh, we all do know that uh, regeneration is one of the most important factors, right? Um, let's start uh, with Sophia this time. Uh, how does your re recovery routine look like? Um, I have to say before I didn't pay a lot of attention to, to my recovery. And I guess that's why I, I was struggling a lot with my hip lately. But now I learned that recovery is very important in, I guess, in every sport. And uh, um, all my coaches in, in Olympic Center in Linz, they said that, and physios, they said that uh, like a sportsman has to take um, a very lot of time from his like day to recover. So now, <laughs> how I recover during the tournament or or now during my in general, in general during the season when you are fit. Yeah. So in in Nice we have a very lot of opportunities. I I go to physiotherapy and massage almost every day. And also we have a cool box where you can like, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not like ice box, but it's cool box for, for regeneration. It's like cold regeneration. And also we have uh, lymph drainage, um, what we can also do every day. And of course, stretching and mobilization exercises. This is also very important. Now, since I was injured, I, I was trying to do stretching and mobilization every day. Yeah, so thank you, Sofia. There are, you are right, there are a lot of uh, possibilities uh, to, to do recovery practice. You are very right and I totally agree uh, with your stuff. That is one of the most important things in the daily life of a sportman. Uh, over to Tomislav. What about you, Tommy? Uh, luckily, I was not injured uh, a really long time. Uh, about uh, regeneration, I think uh, I'm listening to my body. So when I feel I'm tired, I'm not practicing. I'm not going to the red zone. I mean, if I can say like this. So um, also I'm doing massage uh, uh, sometimes. And yeah, I think it's most important that uh, you must, if you feel you're tired, you you should not push so much that uh, you can get injured. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, I basically think uh, and totally agree with you that uh, this is one of the most important things to listen to your body and yeah, uh, to, to spend a lot of time uh, with recovery methods. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Bernie, what about you? Uh, yes, uh, in the beginning of my career, when I started to be quite a high level, I didn't uh, take care of uh, recovery a lot. That's why I was a lot of time uh, injured. But after that, I learned to be careful of my body because I know it's uh, one of the most important in sport. And also in our life that the health is the most important. And of course, I'm listening also to my body. Hope Thomas last day that uh, when I feel a little bit pain, then I, I prefer to go directly after match to a massage and always before practice or matches or after matches, I am trying to find a place to make stretching because I think it's very important, the stretching for the body. And of course, uh, the, when I have just practices and I am not in tournaments, I am trying to make ice bath for my legs to recover more quickly because uh, I don't have where to do, so always I am I put in cold water still so many ice and I try to sit in this. But how I say stretching is very important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the ice bath and massages for me it's very important during the tournament and of course uh, of also after practices. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that yeah, of course during the tournament uh, you need to find a place and so on. Yeah, this is right. Uh, 
if you if you see how they are doing the recovery methods uh, nowadays or actually how it changed in the last decade uh, that's a big difference to before you're totally right also the the staff members they are much more at the moment yeah yes of course because like how i said before when i was younger i was always injured but also i didn't take care of my body and about recovery and of course now from when i am taking care like two years i was not any more injured them and i am very proud of myself hopefully it stays like this continue I like hope, this. <laughs> i hope so i hope so thank you and uh, what about you aruna uh just like everyone said recovery is another important aspect either from previous tournament or training or from injury it is very very important you know if uh, you are to recover so quick from uh, injury you really need to follow your doctors and physiotherapist advice uh from tournament uh, it is very very important to rest and rest uh it's important to get massage stretching for me i'm doing a lot of uh, i'm going several times to jacuzzi and uh, several times i'm doing uh, ice bath and uh, from training it is very important to stretch after training so that your body can get totally recovered but of course after we must have uh, putting all these things uh in consideration uh relaxation is very very important you know you can even go to physiotherapist go to jacuzzi ice bath almost all these things if you don't get enough sleep enough rest things won't get back to normal so i think it is very very important after we must have uh, considered everything it is very very important uh to sleep a lot i mean something like eight hours mm -hmm. thank you very much for your personal insights and uh, when, very when, interesting when, insights. when you win the recovery is easy right <laughs> yes yes <laughs> when you lose it's not that easy <laughs> So, yeah, sorry, sorry Dominic, go ahead. No problem, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now it's time for our questions and answers part. Um, I would like to start uh, with a question from Ramon Ortega Montes. Um, it's actually for all of you, so uh, maybe let's start again with Sofia this time. Uh, which tools for physical exercises you bring with you to the competitions, Sofia? Um, wait, sorry, my camera, um, oh, yes, uh, what's happening? I cannot see oh. no one. I cannot see anyone. I don't know what is happening. Okay. Ah, now is better. Now is back. <laughs> so yeah. I take my leg roll with me mm -hmm. and uh, a mini band and a terra band and um, a hyper world. This is like um, ma massage for massage and vibration uh, for the body. And um, yeah, that's that's the things what I take with me. Okay, thank you very much, Sofia. Uh, what about you, Aruna? Uh, I think almost everyone will say the same thing. <laughs> yes. We all we we all have uh, elastics with us almost all the time. You know, we have a, a massage a roller. Uh, others they have a massage gun. We have different kind of things, but I think almost everyone will say yes. similar <laughs> things. Possibly, we will we will have a look. Let's let's have a look what Tommy what Tommy has with him. Honestly, I'm not taking anything. I just believe that my teammates will have something, so I will. <laughs> <laughs> I have real professional teammates uh, in my uh, in Croatia, so they are using almost everything. So I always have uh, whatever I need. Yes, as I as I also play together with Franekovic, I do know that he has all of the equipment with him. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Bernie? Same like uh, Sofia, I mean that always the back roll and the bands are with me. And also sometimes, not always, I have this uh, massage ball. When I have a pain in one place, I am pushing there until I feel that is better. But uh, how, how I do not say that everybody, I think, bring the same things because we cannot bring something bigger. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is true, but uh, I would also be interested if if you let's start now with you, and if you if you bring also your your t a lot of balls with you to do multi ball if it's possible during the during the tournament in the practice hall. May for European for World Championship Olympics, of course, uh, I am bringing uh, a lot of balls, but for opens like. German Open or something like this. I don't have a lot. I take maximum 10, 15 balls with me because uh, we are a lot of players and it's not so much place for make multi balls. And but in Olympics, World Championship and European Championship, yes, we have more because uh, we try to have our table sometimes and then we can make some short multi balls. Yeah, you are right on the world too. It's not that easy to find a not tape easy. for multi balls. <laughs> not easy. Just for Japanese are easy and for Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tommy? Uh, I'm not taking balls, uh, but our coach is always taking the balls, so we are safe. Uh, him, you count on him. <laughs> yeah. You I'm count always... on everybody, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aruna? Uh, just like we have seen for years, I've been playing alone in Protoss, so I normally don't bring a lot of balls for multi balls. I only have my normal balls, and sometimes stealing from Pushar and stealing from others. <laughs> <laughs> so but this was now off the record. Unfortunately, it's recorded, but okay, good. <laughs> and I know Sofia uh, that in some tournaments uh, you do have multiple training with your coach. Uh, so I guess you have a lot of balls with you, no? Uh, yes, but yeah, mostly it's the coach who brings who brings. <laughs> Then it's important to bring the multi balls, uh, many balls, because then the preparation for the match is also longer. But on the tournaments, like like Barry said, on opens, we don't have plays, and yeah, Asian players they just pick up the balls and they don't look, and many times it's our balls. Yeah. They are stealing. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, I would like to pass over to Max for the next question from our chat. Yeah, yeah. we have a question from uh, Luisana Perez. Um, the question is, uh, uh, which exercises you usually start your regular training? Uh, service, uh, control, tactics, uh, placement. Uh, how is your routine uh, uh, in your training session? Start with uh, Aruna this time. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, for me, after we must have warm up, forehand and backhand, so, uh, sometimes some top top. I always like to start with 2 2, probably like half of uh, 10 minutes, only forehand. And uh, the next five minutes, uh, probably co combine it together with backhand. I am doing this a lot because I know my backhand is not so strong and I run a lot in match. So I always uh, prefer to practice 2-2, two -two, but more times with my forehand because I know I will uh, apply forehand 90% uh, during the matches. Great, great. Uh, Bernie? Uh, depends. Sometimes I start uh, to warm up forehand and backhand, and I make backhand, middle, backhand, forehand, uh, some regular exercises. But sometimes also I start with service, five minutes forehand service, five minutes backhand, five minutes my special service. And after that, <laughs> a little bit, yes, like this. <laughs> and, uh, of course, so many times I, after service, I try to make a little bit short short because uh, the Asian players are uh, playing very well this. And I know how for me, for my game, it's uh, if I play very good service and receive, then after I can play very well. So that's why for me, sometimes I start with, how I say, different ways, not never the same. Good. Uh, Sofia? Uh, in the beginning, it's mostly footwork, so it's 2-2 uh, two, two or, or 
like uh, more 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 exercises from middle to cover my middle because I'm very tall player. Uh, yes, but it basic it mostly two to uh, footwork in the beginning. Footwork in the beginning, yeah. Uh, Tommy's Tommy's love. Yeah, for me it's the same forehand, uh, backhand, and then uh, I play the, the play two two, and yeah, that's it. Then depends how we are, what we are practicing, but I start with two two. Uh, okay, I would add one uh, one more, but this coming from from myself because uh, uh, just before the the match, uh, are, are you going? Are you a player more uh, for consistency or more for uh, game like situation, more random? What uh, what is your feeling? Okay, today I feel very okay. I can perform very well. Would you go more for the consistency or more uh, random? Tomislav, start from you. For uh, for me, I. Uh, depends how I'm feeling that day, but mostly uh, I'm uh, trying to be as much as consistent as I can in the warm up before the match. So I'm trying to keep ball on the table, and in the end I try just some situations from the match uh, which I tactically prepared. Good, uh, Sofia. Yes, same like Tomislav. Uh, first I try to be consistent, and then. Uh, in the end, I try to practice to prepare for the opponent and then to practice uh, random exercises which I need. Bernie? Same, also I like to be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, I like to be consistent, but uh, how Tommy Slaster uh, say that it's very important uh, how I feel in the this day. But after, yeah. I think it's the most important to know how you feel and uh, what you can do in this day. So I go on consistent. Aruna. Oh, for me, it is like uh, 30 to 70. I do like 30% uh, of uh, consistency. Why 70 is for random? Because I know in the ton in the match situation, it's going to be like almost uh, everything is going to be like random. So random is very, very important. But uh, the 30% is only for top top, you know, for long rallies. Very good. So back to Dominic. Thank you very much, Max. Uh, one, another question from Juan Pablo Parra. How do you cheer yourself up during the match when everything is going against you? Maybe when you have just lost in doubles and you have to play your singles match in 30 minutes. I would say let's start with Bernie. How do you cheer up yourself? Uh, I try to be positive and very good mentality because uh, this match, what we lost already, we cannot repair just in the future. So we need yeah. to forget yeah. at the moment. So we need to concentrate for the next match. And of course, when we arrive in the hotels or in our apartment, of course, we we need to we need to see what we made bad and what mistakes. And then at home we can repair. But at the moment in the hall, when you know that you have the next match, you need to be very well uh, mentality and uh, you need to let uh, apart the match what you lost. So I am... I am very positive and I know if you lose one match, it, it, you will not have all the day bad. So I am thinking to the next match. Of course, I am sad and I am not happy, but at the moment I cannot do anything. So I just let apart and I am thinking for the next match to win the next match, next, next one. Thank you very much for your positive answer for all the attendees in our webinar. And I would like to know how Sofia cheers herself up. Um, yeah, I'm also trying to stay positive, uh, to, to live in the moment. I think this is the most important thing. And if you have a bigger goal, like it doesn't matter if you lose on the way. So this is always my thought. It, it doesn't matter when the next match is, if it's in half an hour or in one day, of course, it's more difficult to concentrate if it's in half hour or, or in, in one hour, but mostly I also try to stay positive and to think about the bigger goal which I have in my life. 
Thank you very, very much, Sophie. And this was also a good point you mentioned. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, to the goal setting is uh, very, very important in in the high performance sport life, but nevertheless also in general in the life, I would say. Um, over to Aruna. What about you, Aruna? What are your uh, procedures, methods? To it, is always, uh, it is always a sad situation whenever we lose, you know, but uh, the biggest uh, lessons we always have is from losing. But of course, losing is unavoidable. As a sportman, losing will come while winning will come at the same time. It is very, very important to correct those mistakes that made us lose. And uh, it is uh, absolutely very important to focus on the next one, you know. Losing is already in the past. Uh, why winning will come in the future? So for me, I'm always like, okay, losing the last match does not mean that I'm very bad. Uh, I just try as much as possible to learn from those matches I lost, then focus on the next one. And this is always working for me, to bring back the lost glories. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So not in every situation, but in most of the situation, you can learn the most from your losses. You are totally right. Yeah. And you have to accept the challenge to change it for the future. Um, yeah. Last but not least, Tommy, what about you? Yeah, I agree. I don't have so much to add. Uh, I agree with what they said. There are, there, is, there are many tournaments and I, we, of course, know that we cannot win every match. So we need to live uh, in the present, not think about past and we need to try to improve. Yeah, same what they said. So we just need to be positive and uh, try to be better. Thank you very much for your positive messages to our audience. Um, back to you, Max. Yeah, I have one uh, one last. Actually, uh, you know, it's uh, very related with uh, uh, with with regular players. Uh, more in general, um, uh, it happens very often that uh, you were leading the game, and then uh, maybe ten six, ten seven happened that you lose the game back to the bench, and uh, maybe start regretting. Uh, rather than uh, uh, focus on the next game that you have to you have to play. How, how is your feeling that moment? I guess uh, it, it happened in the past, or the the opposite maybe it was a game that you were not supposed to win and you won. Starting from the Sofia, so what uh, what uh, would you do in that moment? How you make quickly you know uh, back uh, to focus? So I think in this situation, it's also very important to stay in the present situation and not to think so much about like you lost the set and what will happen if you lose the next one. So just to stay in the present and also think that uh, in this situation, a good coach is very important because, because sure. uh, many times you cannot... Um, like calm yourself yourself by only by yourself so uh, the coach can help you sometimes if he can find the right words for you that's uh, very true very true the coach we coaches okay anyway <laughs> very true that uh, we have to keep the player uh, calm and then uh, when they come to the bench and say i should have won that game ah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it's not easy bernie your uh, your experience <laughs> yeah uh, of course in these situations uh, i am a little bit uh, like sad and i am thinking what mistakes uh, i did that i lost the game but in same time i am positive because uh, i am thinking that can happen also for me that i am winning from 10 6 or 6 7 2 or some different scores so just I am thinking what mistake I made for I know that the next game I don't make the same mistakes. And of course, have Sophia say it's very important you have one coach who knows you, who knows you and he know to control you to say some words what can help you and make you to feel a little bit more relaxed and uh, not to put more pressure on you. I think this is very important, but how I say it, of course, it's also very important how the, we are thinking like players because in the end we are at the table and we know also and we need to feel what is also the best for us. But 
Good. Also, it's important how I say somebody needs to calm you to say the right words for you can be positive and to be prepared for the next game. For the next. Yeah, you're very true. Uh, Tom is love. Uh, so, yeah, we need to accept that uh, this is happening in the sport really often to some of these turnarounds. So we need to keep our head clear and uh, have to fight until the last point. Yeah, that's it. Good. We conclude with you, uh, Runa. For me, it's of two ways. You know, if uh, you are playing with a coach, it is a... Uh, it's not going to be very bad, you know. The coach can actually control you, calm you down and focus on the next one. It is more difficult when you are playing alone and that is always happening to me on the world tours, you know. I play alone on several occasions. But of course, as a professional, you just have to calm yourself down when there is no one there telling you what to do, you know. You have to focus and believe that uh, the next one is going to be yours. Hopefully, if you don't give up. So I'm always not giving up. I'm always like, uh, if he was able to win me from seven point different, then the next one is, is very, very possible. And uh, in sports, this will continue to happen. On several occasions, we lost from behind. Uh, from in front, you know, we are like 10, seven or something, we lost. And it is uh, the same kind of situation on several occasions. We are, we are losing and we win in the end. So I think absolutely, finally, it is very, very important to concentrate and focus always on the next one. You know, it is always like it is not over and it is over. So it is very important to focus on the next one all the time. Great. Very, very good message. As, as we said before, uh, adaptation, uh, accepting the situation. We know that if something happens for us, can uh, happen for them as well. So great, great uh, answers from you. Um, back to you, Dominic. Maybe we are uh, ready to, to conclude this, uh, this webinar. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh Finally, I would like uh, to hear from, from each of you, from the panelists, uh, regarding the extraordinary time with COVID-19. Um, could you please uh, just uh, finish the following sentence? It's going to be all right because... Aruna. Can you say it again, please? It is going to be all right because... It is going to be all right with us. Because, because it's going to be all right, because it no, is going to be all right, because. You have to finish the sentence. Ah, it is going to be all right, because yes. nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Tommy? <laughs> uh, it's gonna be all right because all things, all bad things come to an end. Great, great. Piani, what about you? Well, uh, because we stay home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. It's gonna be all right because we are all fighting together. Yes. Very good. And because and we are a team. Yes. All right. True. Uh, I would like to thank all of you, to our panelists, uh, for giving so many interesting personal insights, advices, and for sharing your thoughts uh, regarding the today's topic. Um, yeah. Now, now all of us uh, for sure uh, know even much more or are much more aware of how complex our sport is and how important it is to cover all four pillars, uh, the technical, tactical, physical, and mental part. So yeah, uh, I would uh, like also to thank uh, all of you for your interest and attendance. And I am looking forward to our next webinar on next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime. And the topic will be performance analysis with a special guest from China Mr. Xiao Chen, the Chinese women's national team coach, will be there. So thank you very much again and see you next time. Pass over to you, Max. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dominic. It was a great meeting. 
Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we have discussed uh, about these four pillars. Uh, I hope uh, we have given uh, good messages to our audience, players and coaches. Uh, if today we have talked about uh, performance keys, uh, next time we will talk about uh, how to analyze the performance. So we have a, we have a great guest, uh, Xiao Zhen from China, from a national team, women's national team. And, uh, and uh, don't miss that uh, opportunity. Thank you very much to all of you. Good luck uh, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe and healthy. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.